Spinner, and welcome to Room 101. Supplying the negative vibes tonight are soul sister Alice Levine, <laughs> Daddy Cool Bill Bailey, and my little aunt Thally, Eunice Dobbs. <laughs> So what's upsetting Bill? Tarama Salata. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> it's just not right. <laughs> it's just... There's something wrong about it. It's toxic, salty, fishy gloop. It looks like the devil's own blancmange. It's wrong. <laughs> Wrong, 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 wrong. Why have Tarama Salata when there's hummus in the world? <laughs> I've got to tell you, Bill, I'm not saying this for comedy effect. This is absolutely true. I have Tarama Salata as a meal, I would say, five or six times a week. No, you don't. I what? swear. No, that... I swear that is true. I, and I'll show you how I... You eat in... Did this is how I eat it. Have you seen corn cakes? Corn cakes, yes. Yeah. I mean, cakes is pushing it. <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's call them corn coasters. Yeah. <laughs> I break those. I, I'm not... Honestly, if, if my family were here, they would testify to this. And I will do this. I'll have a bit of greenery with it, a bit of salad. But yeah. um, mainly... Uh, oh, just... You eating it like that. It's oh. making me feel ill. It was great. How could you? It's I not love right. it. You've gone for the the kind of shop bought pink one. Yeah. Because mm. I think is is it Greek? Is that it where is. it's from? Yeah. It's usually got like fresh dill and stuff in it. It's not. I don't know where the pinks come from. It's but... dyed. It's dyed. It's dyed pink to don't... make it look more like pudding. <laughs> <laughs> it might be when I was a kid. I thought it was Angel Delight. I took a big spoonful <laughs> of it. And I got a shot. The, the sort of quality stuff. Yeah, but the... is uh, is this colour? Yes. And I do occasionally. Uh... That's it... less suspicious, isn't it? Yeah. Now, the wider stuff, that is the top quality gear. That, that I... <laughs> Sorry, I'm not talking... I'm not talking like it's some kind of drug you'd buy yeah. at a pub. <laughs> you got to hear that white stuff. No, it's not cut with the pink stuff. No, that's... So, wait, no, the pink stuff, that's, like, street the, the, grade. That is really the low-grade stuff. <laughs> that is really being but cut... But still lovely. The and they, they, only, they tend to put a little bit of beetroot in it. That's all to get it pink. It's nothing bad. It's Bill not... thinks it's got rat poison in it, it and, yeah. like, cement dust. <laughs> <laughs> the high-quality gear, yes, it's white. It's an ancient food. Tarama, which is Turkish for... Uh, <laughs> fish. Yeah. And... <laughs> for goodbye, mother. <laughs> <laughs> and salata, which is Greek for sa salad. <laughs> and I'm not decrying the good stuff, the ancient stuff. I'm talking about what you're talking about, which is the shop, this cheap kind of pinky goop. And it's suspiciously slimy. smooth as well, isn't it? It's got a strange slimy what do you mean texture. Suspiciously smooth. Well, because I feel like slimy. the good stuff, slimy. Yeah, the good yeah. stuff has texture. The texture. Oh. Hummus is slimy. No, 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 no it's no. gritty. <laughs> It's what gritty because it? it's made from hardboard. That's it's, what it tastes it's like. Not, it's one of the great foods of the world. Hummus. The hummus with the carrot baton is one of the great <laughs> pleasures <laughs> of life. <laughs> you can put virtually anything in hummus. Yeah, but exactly, celery. hummus needs help in the way that tarama salata doesn't. Tarama salata needs to be avoided. It needs to be buried in the earth for millions of years until it loses its radioactivity. <laughs> <laughs> but what I'm saying, I don't like its solo work. Yeah, but you had to have a flipping corn, corn. cake... Well, there's to, a lot of flavour in that. ..to force the tarama salata down. You wouldn't get it with a spoon. That's cos I don't want to use my fingers. Well, use a straw. <laughs> How dare you! Look, you're a musical man, Bill, yes. aren't you? Let, let me see if I can win you over with, with this. Tara Masalata Is this the start of me for two? Tara Masalata Tara Masalata As we get up to the paddle with my heart And then somehow I knew Tara Masalata That's 
from? It's from my new album. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I can't tell you what an important part of my life it is. I can't is, believe it. You think I'm making it <laughs> up. I have... Every week, I get through three tubs, no problem. Would you, like, <laughs> lick Look at me, look at me. I'm 60. I look fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> and do you know why I look fantastic? <laughs> and so, too, you now. People who speak too loudly. Yes. You know, like when you're in a cafe or something and there's a group of people next door and they have to shout and the table's only quite small and they're, like, shouting across to each other. And the worst thing is I go uh, to Edinburgh quite a lot because I have a family up there and I love the train journey. It's about five hours. Mm. And so you've got your picnic and your book and then suddenly... Everybody's mobiles come out and people start shouting down into them. You want to go up to them and say, excuse me, if you're as sophisticated as you're making out you are, you should know that you don't have to shout into a mobile. <laughs> Technology. <laughs> My partner asked me very early on in our relationship whether people thought I was deaf. Because people used to come up to me and go, Frankie! Frankie! <laughs> From about three feet away. <laughs> Did you get this, Bill? Yeah. What is that about? Uh, is it because we don't respond when they're shouting at the telly? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I think it's an assumption that you are always kind of up for a bit of a laugh. Yeah. You know, if you're a comedian, people think you're just up for a jake the whole time. So they would say, Bill, Billy! <laughs> <laughs> this is people shouting at me from vans. Yeah, you get that thing from a van. Legend! <laughs> Which I quite like. <laughs> yeah. I got that once and I was quite proud. And I looked round and uh, King Arthur was standing behind me. <laughs> <laughs> um, can you explain it? At the phone thing, I think that is people thinking you have to share, but there are some people... Who you but they're showing to... off as well, aren't they? That they're doing some big business deal, oh, yeah. you know, that they want everyone to hear about. And you can't carry on reading if people are shouting like that, like on the train, uh, because their words get all muddled up with the words that you're trying to... Oh. Maybe you should read aloud. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> Really loudly. Yeah. Really loudly. <laughs> to be, annoy them. That'd be lovely. If that'd be so do, nice. If you're going to do that, can I come with you? <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever um, considered earplugs, Yuna? No, I haven't. <laughs> Some people, um, you know, you put your fingers in your ears, yeah. but obviously if you're in a restaurant, you're eating. That's difficult. So I, um, I use these. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Absolute bliss. <laughs> These ones I wear, and people don't even know I'm wearing um, earplugs. <laughs> <laughs> a little glimpse into the future. Yeah, what I really hate is when people have wear these huge headphones and listen to music, yeah. and <laughs> but then so it's over. Start, <laughs> you know. Joining in with some of the words. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, oh, it's horrible. So how do you cope with these loud people, Una? Do you just tolerate it and smile? I suppose I do tolerate it and just. You've, you've never complained. Close the book and. Yeah. Una, do you ever lose it? Do you ever just go crazy? I'm going crazy inside, but I don't say anything. I just. You never know nowadays. It could give you a punch or whatever. <laughs> Oh, come on, not in first class. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so, um, what's upsetting Alice? So, it's passive-aggressive politeness. Mm. <laughs> so, mm. passive aggression in general, I love. <laughs> it's great. But passive-aggressive politeness is, for example, when somebody makes themselves feel better by doing something polite, but it's it's kind of got an undertone. So, have you ever been in a long corridor? Actually, it happened here. There are long corridors here. 
where somebody opens the door for you, but it's miles away. So you have to pick up your pace and you've got bags and stuff and like a coat with you. So you have to run down the corridor mm. so that you're not keeping them from holding the door too yeah, long. I, hate that. I didn't ask you to hold the door open for me. Don't make, don't make out like I've put you out. You've decided to be a doorman for the day. <laughs> the other one which particularly upsets me is you're on a bus and someone sat on um, the outside seat, so the seat near the aisle, not the one next to the window, and you get on, and they don't budge up to the window seat. They make, they make you clamp... They kind of lean like this. They go like this. <laughs> they make you budge into the gap, and then they go, you're welcome, kind of thing. You haven't helped me in the slightest. Don't pat yourself on the back for being a good person. You've done that. <laughs> I mean, the door thing. I, it's, I hold doors open for people, but you've got to judge your distance. Very much. Otherwise, it's, it is a, a move of aggression. I've had people just give up on me. They've opened the door, and I, I, don't, I won't hurry. And they've just given up. They look over your shoulder like they were holding it for someone else who's now gone, yeah. and they just leave it. I never accelerate. Let them wait. <laughs> Having said that, if I hold a door open for someone, I want to thank you. <laughs> in these flats I lived in, I was getting in quite late and I held the door open for a bloke. And the thing I always say, if they don't say anything, is, don't mention it. Oh, you didn't. I always say that. That's so passag, though. Yeah. And this guy said to me, it's one o'clock in the morning. And I said, sorry, I, what are the opening hours for politeness? <laughs> <laughs> it's like if you're yeah. in the car and you let someone out. You want something back. Yeah. You know, you've stopped. You go, go on. And they just drive past. I will go, oh, thank you. Yeah, no, thanks. <laughs> Cheers. I thought you were going to say, I will follow them home. Follow them. Yeah, them. I'll just <laughs> follow them. <laughs> Tailgate them all the way to where they live. I have a friend who calls it out. You know the people that push onto the train before people have come off? Oh. And she just stands at the door and goes, off before on. <laughs> no one's asked her to do it. That's brilliant. <laughs> wow. And it does have quite, a, quite an work. impact. It does. Yeah, she's the only one in the, ca in the cabin. <laughs> yeah. It's ideal. She always gets a seat. Uh, you know, I imagine you're a phenomenally polite person. Is oh, that? No. You're not? No. Oh, OK. Like, for instance, with, with the car business, and, and uh, sometimes they go, boop, 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 because you're not hurrying or something when you're crossing the road. And I always go, legs before wheels. <laughs> <laughs> The chronology of getting older. <laughs> but... <laughs> I've never heard of this before, but it's people using the names of their Wi-Fi networks to be passive-aggressive. Right. So, um... <laughs> this is so your neighbours will pick up your Wi-Fi network. This is genius. And then you're actually an exchange between two neighbours. This one. <laughs> Stop stealing my newspaper. And the response, fabulous. For your information, I don't read it, I just throw it away. <laughs> I'm so into that. Um, you may have guessed, Bill. What? I'm not going to put Taramasa on. <laughs> What would I live on? Hummus! <laughs> um, people who talk too loudly. Again, I, it is a pain, but I love to eavesdrop on a train. <laughs> and I know it's not my business that Dave in sales lost 7K on the Zanussi <laughs> deal, but I still like the, <laughs> the idea that I'm hearing you. It's exciting. The passive-aggressive politeness. I think politeness is such an important thing, and I don't want to have it impaired or spoilt in any way. So I'm going to put passive-aggressive politeness into Room 101. <laughs> so, what's making you now unhappy? <laughs> Moths. Mmm. Oh. Moths. What are they for? <laughs> I had a lovely woolly dressing gown once and I hung it up for the, the summer season and when I went to it at the, in the winter season, there was a hole, I don't exaggerate, that big. I mean, unmendable. Mm. 
And you never see moths flying around with great big bellies. What do they do <laughs> with the wool that they've eaten? You never see moth poo. It's no. What, what are they doing with this, all this wool? What actually eats the material is they lay their eggs and the eggs use the, the cloth as, as nutrition. And so it's the, the growing babies that... Um... But the hole was that big. Yeah, well, it's quite a community there. <laughs> Do you think moths are making their own clothes? No, <laughs> secretly. But they go for the posh wool. They do, yeah. They love all. They love the nice stuff. They yeah. leave all the, you know, the tarama oh. salata of the clothes world. <laughs> <laughs> they leave all of that yeah. and they go for the nice stuff. But that's very... resentment because, like, butterflies always look fantastic, whereas moths got yeah. that sort of North Korea type of feel. To them. <laughs> I can show you an example because this is this is brought from my house. I uh, I have a, a moth trap. And uh, if you look at that, it looks like there's been some sort of terrible germ warfare happened in the Louvre. Yeah. <laughs> or like a, somebody's done a graph, but using dead moths. Yeah. So, <laughs> hey. This is about a month's worth of collection in my, in really? my bedroom. Yeah, so I get quite a lot. I um, found the solution. Ah. Lavender bags. What, hit so them with a lavender bag? No, no. <laughs> Squeeze the lavender bag. Every time you open the drawer and they're with the sweater, just squeeze them and the smell. They don't like the smell. I did that, but I got rid of the moths, but when I got in my room, it's full of pensioners. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> At my age, it's not a bad thing. <laughs> Moths are amazing. No, I'm sticking up my moths. I'm really? Afraid. Are you? Moths are amazing, Creed. There's, there's more species of moth than butterfly. They're incredibly diverse. You can't say they're dull and brown. What about the emperor hawk moth? Come on. <laughs> hey? Yes. <laughs> a beautiful, Don't pretend. stunning Everyone's example. Everyone's like, yeah! I don't really know. Go! No, it's just stunning. Pinks and browns, they're beautiful things. Fascinating creatures. And they're nocturnal. Okay. Like, you know, I mean, I'm nocturnal. So I... I I, I associate with moths. <laughs> you didn't consider wearing the dressing gown with the hole? <laughs> no, it was huge and it was in a funny place. Oh, OK. <laughs> so what is upsetting Bill Bailey? Trying on clothes. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I find this uh, a kind of... Uh, uh, torture. Uh, and when I say trying on clothes, I don't mean at home, in the comfort of your own. I mean going to a shop and trying to pick clothes out and going into a booth and trying them on. It's just some form of hell. Because you get in and the, the clothes are stiff and unyielding. You get in the <laughs> booth. I feel already claustrophobic. I'm getting a bit of a sweat on just thinking about it now. <laughs> White wall, a mirror, yourself looking, ugh, staring at you. And what usually happens with me is, take your jeans off, all the change fell out of my jeans pockets <laughs> and rolled under the door <laughs> of the changing room out into the shop. It's in the shop oh, now. No. Like, about four and a half quid's worth of change <laughs> is loose in the public domain. <laughs> and then the, the most... Horrible. When people come around, they go, are you all right in there? <laughs> like, it, something's gone wrong. And then, oh, there's money here. And then I was just scrabbling around on the floor in my underpants, getting <laughs> people passing money under the door. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought, this is no way to live. <laughs> I often... I'm, 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 I'm with my girlfriend, so she's trying on stuff and I'm hanging around outside, which I don't like, cos I always mm. find they look at you, the assistants, as if, are you waiting for someone or are you an opportunist? <laughs> yeah. Who's just hoping there might be... the curtain might not be properly drawn or something like that. I feel really... I have to sit looking at the floor. <laughs> this idea, though, of, of being in a, in a closed space, trying to put on clothes, it's always awkward, there's never enough room. I just find that. And then the, that little shame thing where they give you a little, a little disc, some plastic disc. There's, there's, take that, cos you look like you might steal it. <laughs> but when I go into a cubicle and step out, I cannot resist going, ta-da! <laughs> I... I do that in public toilets. <laughs> 
So there is an element of performance uh, well, for me. There is, maybe, but it's shame, I feel, because I've chosen these trousers, and then when they go, everything all right? Yes. Do you need any help? No. No, I'm fine. What I want to say is, no, everything's not all right. This is a squalid indignity that I'm putting myself <laughs> through. And when they bring the extra size and they shout it out, uh, who yeah. are these for? We got the size. You got shh, don't just the world. Yeah. <laughs> oh, too small. Were they too small? <laughs> <laughs> but the girl that let herself go over Christmas. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like the mirror at the end. You know, if it is the separate cubicles where you're supposed to come out and look at the big mirror. Oh, yeah. like there's already a mirror in your little room. You don't Ugh. need to come out to the public mirror to do a kind of catwalk. I have my own little private space. And there's you. one of that, a bit of that on the mirror. Oh, yeah, Isn't always distort, like a fairground distorted. mirror. So you're like, why are my ankles now the same width as my head? That's really <laughs> weird. That's mean. Somebody putting fairground mirrors in changing rooms. <laughs> yeah. Or are, they? Jobs. or are yeah. they? Or are they? <laughs> but can I say, this is a changing room that you don't have to step out of oh. to show the person with you oh, what you're wearing, which I think is a brilliant idea. You put your clothing on, so that a woman's gone in, this is her, um, her partner sitting there, and then she presses a button. Uh. He can see it. Not keen. OK. So you don't have to step out. Isn't that a great idea? Yeah, but but... It feels a bit like she's not allowed out until she finds the right one. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know that. See, that is already making me slightly palpitate with the f the fear of what might happen if that malfunctions. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know? like it, de it unfrosts and you. That would be horrible. That's just made it a hundred times worse. <laughs> okay, what's winding up, Alice? So it's drama cliches. Mm. There are quite a lot of drama cliches, so I won't list them all. But one in particular that kind of grinds my gears is um, really bad exposition. So that's that bit where in TV or in a film, they give the audience the background that they need to understand the rest of the story. They don't have time to actually act it out, so they just do a bit of explaining. So they do lots of this in... Um, kind of cop dramas or medical dramas. Medical dramas are good because it's usually a doctor explaining to another doctor something they already know. So they'll be like, don't forget, if we pull the heart out, they're gonna die. <laughs> <laughs> when it's bad, it's really bad. It's really patronising. It is patronising. Isn't it patronising, Yuna? Yeah. Furious about it. I Just... shout at the television, cut! <laughs> <laughs> it's usually about the time, isn't it? They, they, they think, let's move this along. Yeah. We yeah. want people to get what's happening pretty... Hi, hey. So, how how is how was your day as the the hospital the, the, where you work as an orthopedic surgeon for the last <laughs> ten years? Wow, well, it was great. It was great, thanks. But I'm having a few problems with the affair that I'm having with Doctor <laughs> Mitchell, who lives at 42. The law oh, the, the affair which has been going on for several years. You know, it's like yeah. you wouldn't say that. That is not your fault. Nobody talks like that. But the worst for it, the absolute worst for it, is every single James Bond film. So there's that bit which we all know where James Bond's had a lovely time, probably had a little snog with the lady, and then, oh, it's got captured. What, Wally? <laughs> Jim wasn't playing that. So then he's usually about to be killed by the baddie, and the baddie's like, just before I kill you, I'm just going to let you know the entirety of my plan for taking over the world. <laughs> <laughs> kind of pointless, cos obviously I'm about to kill you, but I just want to get it off my chest. Uh, it's kind of cathartic for me. Uh. Um, so here's what I'm going to do. Uh, and then they tell him everything, and then obviously he escapes. But that's for us, isn't it? That's so we know what he has to discover and what he has mm. to get over. I always think once they tell him, they're going to say, you know, maybe I won't wait for the egg timer to, <laughs> to, to strike the match that burns the string that causes. I'll just shoot you in the face. <laughs> <laughs> I always think that a thing that they're not very good at in drama, especially like soap operas, is telling lies. Because I think most people are brilliant at telling lies. Yeah. But mm. in soap operas, they say, have you seen uh, Steve recently? Um, yes. No, no, I, no I, haven't, I haven't seen him for ages, actually. Yeah. Oh, I just wondered. Oh. Whereas in normal life, I know we've all had affairs. Um, <laughs> people are brilliant liars, yeah. in fact. It's like the hug one. You know when they hug in a drama and one of them's evil and one of them's good and then the bad one's always like this. 
<laughs> yeah. yeah. If you're evil, do you just constantly do evil looks up to, like, it's usually top, top right? <laughs> <laughs> I tell us the thing in EastEnders I love. If someone who runs one of the market stalls has got something important to do, they'll just say, uh, Paul, can you look after my stall for a bit? <laughs> and they say, well, I what's the pricing system? <laughs> I've got no retail experience, but they, they, just give them, they just give them, like, a leather pouch yeah. with money in, and they say, yeah, sure, and off they go. As long as you've got a bum bag, you'll be fine. Yeah. You don't need to know. Come back in your bankrupt. <laughs> I hate it. I hate it in films, and particularly dramas, where people say, uh, we know, we need to meet. And they go, where? And they, t and they immediately know the exact location. Where should we meet? Uh, corner of La Jolla, sunset. One hour, come along. Uh, how can you think that far? I can't think that fast. If I said to you, I'll meet you in an hour. Uh, but I don't know, um, behind Martin Spencer's. Uh, <laughs> opposite the cash point, where the laundrette used to be. I don't know! <laughs> The chase, obviously, is the cliche. Yeah. Usually, like, through streets and often hitting a fruit stall. Often, sometimes, a fruit stall that only sells pomegranates. <laughs> Are there any <laughs> such stalls? We've got an example of a chase with, with a, something I've never seen. I think this is, even though a chase is a cliche, this is an original thing for me. <laughs> Some serious horse skills, that is. <laughs> I dragged it through on a cable. <laughs> I like to think it was... You know that when mechanics go under your car on those sliding? <laughs> I like to think the horse was on one of those. <laughs> OK, so, um, the drama cliché is... It is poor and, I suppose, lazy writing, but I so love recognising and spotting <laughs> them that I don't want to... I don't want to get rid of them. The, the amount of films I've seen saved by a horse slide. <laughs> <laughs> and I was all set to put moths in because moths have ruined clothes of mine and you argued. But I love trying on clothes, but Bill has argued with such darkness and passion and genuine <laughs> fervour that I am going to put trying on clothes into room yeah. 101. <laughs>brings us to the end of the show and uh, well done Alice you were the most persuasive guest so you are this week's winner <laughs> thanks very much to Bill Bailey Eunice Stubbs and Alice Levine and thank you good night